Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. In the past few weeks, the Minnesota Department of Health has been investigating about a dozen cases of E. coli, and they say that they found that those who became ill ages 2 to 43 had been at the Minnesota State Fair and, and had been around livestock, though some did not have direct contact with the livestock, and they suspect that maybe they had touched contaminated surfaces like a fence, and that's how they were exposed. We are at the urgency room with Dr. Christine Hello. Trussell, so thank you for being with us to talk about E. coli and some other illnesses. So, first of all, exactly what is E. coli? E. coli is a bacteria. Um, it causes a wide variety of illnesses. What we've been hearing mostly about is the GI illness and diarrhea, but there's a whole spectrum of, of illnesses, bacteria. And so you mentioned diarrhea. What would be some other symptoms that someone maybe have E. coli? So as far as the, the GI illness, diarrhea is really the main thing. Bloody stool, abdominal pain, cramping, uh, more serious uh, aspects of the illness can lead to dehydration, kidney failure, okay. bloody stools. So it can be a very serious illness. Most people have mild or GI symptoms with diarrhea and abdominal pain. You know, and in this case that we've been hearing here in Minnesota, it was linked to livestock. But what would be other causes of E. coli? Well, E. coli is transferred from the stool uh, and can be transferred fecal orally, which means from any surface that has stool on it to the hands and then to the mouth. So that's usually the way that E. coli is transmitted. And then how do you go about treating it? Well, E. coli, it depends, it depends really on the illness. There are certain types of uh, E. coli that it's really better to let the, the illness run its course. Other types of E. coli need antibiotics, and that's something that a healthcare professional should decide. And how would you know if, if, what you should seek emergency care, like coming to the urgency room? So certainly if, if from a abdominal symptom standpoint, if you're having bad abdominal pain, diarrhea, if you feel like you're getting dehydrated, um, particularly that's the big risk with diarrhea is that you mm -hmm. want to be sure that you're replacing yeah. all of the liquid that you're losing in the stool. The urgency room, we can provide IV fluids, check for more serious problems like kidney failure or electrolyte problems from the diarrhea, um, fever, bloody stools, you know, the more serious things. And what would be some other um, illnesses, stomach illnesses that you watch out or look for and stuff? Well, as far as that stomach may have even illness, similar symptoms, yeah, yeah, there's a whole variety of different buds that cause diarrhea, abdominal cramping. A lot of them are viral and just run their course. Make in making sure that people stay hydrated is really the main thing. Um, there are you know, less common, but still out there, uh, bacterial illness, diarrheal illnesses such as uh, C. diff, which is a common infection after people have been in the hospital or have had recent antibiotics. And some people say, I had the stomach flu, but there's no intestinal thing with it, for the most part, with the flu. Yes. What, are, what is it that they really have? So influenza itself is primarily a respiratory illness. It can also cause vomiting and diarrhea, but influenza that we hear about every winter is primarily a respiratory illness. Stomach flu is a general term that's often used for nausea, vomiting, diarrheal illnesses. A lot of those are viruses, so there's some overlap in what uh, is commonly discussed. And those can be treated with what type of things? So stomach flu, from a viral standpoint, usually it's a tincture of time, uh, making sure you're keeping up on your fluids, diluting Gatorade 50-50 with water and sipping on that throughout the day, or apple juice 50-50 with water, sipping on that throughout the day, making sure that you're able to continue to make urine, you're not getting excessively weak, fainting, those sorts of things. Final comments for our viewers on how to stay healthy this winter? Just, yeah, good hand washing. If you're sick, stay home, uh, making sure that uh, plenty of rest, plenty of fluids if you do fall ill. Well, great advice it always, as always. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll be back with more right after this. I'm always the first one up. I'm always up for a challenge. I'll overcome any obstacle. I don't believe in limits. I refuse to be average. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. The flu season is here and doctors have confirmed dozens of cases around the country. 
Now is the time to get your flu shot. The flu vaccine won't prevent every case of the flu, but doctors say it's the best way to protect yourself, your family, and everyone around. And for that great advice, we're joined now with Dr. Krista Skorupa with the M Health Fairview Primary Care. So glad to have you with us. Yes, thank you for having me. So now is the time to get that mm -hmm. flu shot because it does take a while like to get up to full immunity too, like for a couple of weeks maybe even. So the flu is around, now is the time. What what do we know about this year's flu vaccine that's available? Great question. I think the most important point uh, to make is that the CDC is recommending annual influenza vaccination for everyone six months and older, and this year is no different. A particular emphasis on our high-risk populations. So we strongly encourage those um, that are, are young infants and children, so ages six months up to five years of age, um, our older adults, so 50 and older with a special emphasis um, if you're 65 and older, anyone who's pregnant, Yep. As I mentioned, my daughter's pregnant. Yeah. She got her flu shot already, yes, too. Yes, so. that's wonderful. Uh, we also um, say anyone with certain chronic medical conditions, such as asthma, diabetes, heart disease, um, if you have um, a compromised immune system. And then another important population is anyone that um, is a primary caregiver for any of those high-risk populations. Really important that they get vaccinated as well. You know, and I think some people uh, often say, well, I, I had the stomach flu. There is no such a thing as really as a stomach flu per se. Mm -hmm. What is the flu and how is that different from what when people are saying stomach flu? Great question. So I say that influenza symptoms actually are, are similar to cold symptoms, the common cold symptoms. Um, however, they just tend to be more severe. You tend to have um, a headache, significant fatigue, body aches, chills. It's not uncommon to have higher fever cough and occasionally sore throat. So quite different than the stomach flu symptoms. Usually diarrhea is in one of those symptoms that goes along with it or? Not typically, not, not with typically. influenza, correct. And then what about, um, I understand the, the spray vaccine is back. Who is that for and um, who should be getting that? Yes, so the nasal spray is available. Um, it's uh, indicated for ages two to 49. However, if you're pregnant or you have asthma, um, you are not a good candidate for um, the flu mist. Um, also, I like to point out that it hasn't been studied to the degree that the injection has. And so while it's available, um, we strongly encourage the injection as mm -hmm. first line. And I understand, isn't the, the flu, um, the spray mist is actually a, a is it a live virus versus the, the vaccine is not? Correct, and so it's a live weakened um, virus. Weakened. Okay. Yep, and so as a result, that's why it isn't for certain populations like our pregnant women, anyone within a compromised immune system, and um, if, you are, um, if you have asthma. And do you have to get multiple um, um, injections or that for some? Cases yeah, or? great question. Um, yeah. So really I think important. I had heard something. Like yeah, that, yeah, important to emphasize that if you are in um, your first year of ever getting the vaccine, so if you are six months of um, age or eight, up to eight, and you're getting your first influenza vaccine, um, you need two doses of, of the vaccine separated by one month in time. And so really important, we encourage those parents to get those uh, young children in to start the vaccination series now, so that you're fully protected um, by the time we really get into the season. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's really good advice mm -hmm. because um, we just know know when the the flu is going to hit. It sounds to me like it's kind of early for hitting other parts of the country already. Great question. Um, the flu season tends to start in October and peaks in uh, January or February, and so certainly parts of the country are starting to see some um, influenza. Um, certainly, I'm sure there are some cases in Minnesota, but it's not widespread just yet. So now is a great time, um, and experts often do recommend trying to get vaccinated by the end of October. And other advice that you would give to our viewers on how they can stay healthy this 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 fall, this winter, and great question. during the flu season? Yep, great question. So um, some common sense. I mean, we obviously encourage if you are ex um, experiencing any symptoms of influenza to stay home. Um, try to avoid close contact with anybody who has um, obvious illness. Um, try to cover your nose and your mouth if you do have cough. And then to avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. And of course, just good general hand washing and lots of it. And um, is there a certain technique to washing your hands? Just soap and water, and is there a time or Yep, anything? soap and water, or and we usually do say you can, you know, say the, the happy birthday song or the ABCs, um, so you really want to get under some good warm water and just uh, with uh, soap, and um, it's, it's not just an in and out. And um, the most important thing is to get that flu shot because when you're talking to people that are at high risk, 
they're at high risk for more complications following the flu and stuff like that. Absolutely, yep. Those severe complications thankfully are rare, but those high risk populations are definitely more at risk. We do also say that anybody that is experiencing any severe complications like chest pain, shortness of breath, high fever up to like 104 degrees, those could be signs of severe complications and we do want you to seek immediate medical attention. I was going to ask when mm -hmm. should you go see the doctor or go to mm -hmm. the emergency mm -hmm. department or something. Most people who do get influenza are going to have mild to moderate symptoms and are not going to need to seek medical attention or receive antiviral therapy. Um, usually we reserve that for our high risk populations or those that have those severe um, um, signs such as again that shortness of breath or chest pain, signs of pneumonia potentially, um, but most people will be able to recover at home just treating um, themselves with those over-the-counter remedies and taking extra good care of themselves. Well I know you're very busy so we appreciate you taking time out to be with us and share yeah. this great advice with our viewers. So yes. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after this. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. This is National Mental Health Awareness Month, and millions of Americans deal with mental illness, but health officials say only about four out of 10 actually seek help. Joining us now, we're very pleased to have with us Dr. Renee Pentecost. She is with the Suicide Prevention Collaborative, and we can talk about some of the issues. Why, why did you start the, why did you, the collaborative form? I don't right. know if you personally started it, but I yes. thought you were part of it. Yes, yeah. I did. So. In 2010, in the spring of 2010, um, I live in Woodbury and our community had several losses to suicide, young people especially. And as a parent in the community, as a community member, and as a professional psychologist in the community, um, it, it hit me personally really hard. I had teenagers knocking on my door in my neighborhood, asking for support, crying to me about the losses that they had experienced. There, there were um, two losses from the local high school within a couple months, wow. and then there were um, some losses in the wider kind of Washington County area. Um, and I work really closely with Dr. Shelley Strong from Central Pediatrics in Woodbury, and we got together and shared our heartache and our frustration and our grief with one another and decided to do our best to pull community members together. So in June of 2010, I sent out mass emails and about 35 caring, mostly professionals showed up at Wood Woodbury City Center. Um, Woodbury donated their space for us to um, congregate and talk. And we did a huge brainstorming session about um, what the, the broader Washington County area had already what, and what we needed to help support suicide prevention efforts and what we needed to do. Um, and so that was when we partnered with Washington County Public Health and a lot of other caring professionals in the community and, um, and young people at the time, there was a Girl Scout troop that was really involved with us. They've now gone on to college since, um, but they helped us um, come up with our name, the Suicide Prevention Collaborative, and also helped us um, come up with a logo and a tagline, which is together it gets better. So what is your main goal? Yeah. To, to have this collaborative. What yeah. do you hope will come out of it? Well, it's been nine years, and our main goal is to kind of threefold. First of all is to decrease stigma around mental illness. We know that because of the stigma of mental illness, many people don't get the help that they need. As the stat says, only four out of ten are seeking right. help. Yeah. Right. And then secondly, to increase the awareness of the signs of suicide. And what are those signs of suicide? Oh, there are multiple signs, um, but in general, I would say um, a change in mood, depression, sometimes substance abuse, and most typically, and not always, there are some verbal cues that people give 
Um, well, you know, they say, I don't want to be here anymore. This is, life is too hard for me. I can't manage it. Um, sometimes there's nonverbal cues like isolation. It, it really varies. One of the really exciting things that the Suicide Prevention Collaborative has been able to offer the community at large is a training called QPR, which much like CPR, um, it's an acronym for Question, Persuade, and Refer. And we teach community members um, for free. The Suicide Prevention and Collaborative, short SPC, um, pays for this training to community members and they learn the warning signs because it is complicated and there's there's not just kind of a set set and, of warning and signs. And I think people feel like, oh, I've, I shouldn't say anything because that might yeah. encourage someone to do it, but I, yeah. it's quite the opposite, isn't it? It is the opposite, Jody. It's absolutely the opposite. We get scared to say, Jody, are you feeling suicidal? The word is hard to come out of our mouths. And so actually when we ask people if they're feeling suicidal, it it gives them a sense of relief, right? Mm -hmm. And they feel less anxious and less, um, and they feel heard and connected with by the person asking the question and it actually does the opposite. So people do think if I ask the question, I'm going to plant that idea in someone's head and that is actually not the case. The opposite happens. So if they're interested in taking the training, mm -hmm. how do they go about doing that quickly? Yeah, and... yeah, what a great question. Um, next week, October 15th, we're offering a free training at Woodbury High School at 7.30. SPC is doing that training. I'll be leading it with a colleague of mine, Robin Jensen, Dr. Robin Jensen. Um, but if you want to um, set a date for the training, you can email me or you could go on our SPC website. Okay. So that's the Suicide Prevention Collaborative yep, website? Yep, Suicide Prevention Collaborative MN.org. And then we have been running um, the, the phone number for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. So mm -hmm. if anyone is thinking or if you know a loved one, yes. seek help, call the number and, yes. and there's people that can help you. Yes. Well, Dr. Penikoff, it's been wonderful to have you with us. It's and great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that awareness and hopefully we yeah. save lives with that. Then. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll be back with more right after this. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never know. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay? Oh, gee. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. It's easy, awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Joining us now is Natalie Rankins and her son, Brandon, and they have created a Special Adventures, is the name of it, to make a difference in the lives of special needs adults like Brandon. So glad to have you with us. Thank you for having us. So Natalie, what is Special Adventures all about? Um, special Adventures is about um, supporting the special needs community. Um, what we did is Brandon and I started um, uh, Special Adventures, and what we do is put on dinner dances once a month um, for special needs adults and Brandon is our DJ. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the reason that we started this is because um, when Brandon turned 18, um, he wanted to hang out with his friends, do things with his friends, and go, like go to movies, bowling, um, out to eat. And every time we invited a friend along, well, like 95% of the time, a lot of them didn't have much money to go because once you move into a group home, you don't have much money at all. You, your, your funds are very, very limited. And so we would pay for them to come along with us. And so I couldn't continue to keep doing that because it was getting kind of expensive. And so Brandon said, well, mom, I want a hangout place. I want my friends to come hang out with me. And I said, 
why don't we start some type of club or something like that? And so we brainstormed, we came up with the name Special Adventures because we what we want to do is go on adventures and do fun things. And so um, Brandon and I um, thought that that would be a great idea to be yeah. able to improve the quality of life of his friends and peers to be able to give them some place to come out and connect with their peers in a social setting that is free of cost to them. So um, the and dinner dances. The design and the yes, and he did. Now, his brother he very well. <laughs> no, he's my brother, and um, he made this for for me, and he did like nice. Uh, uh, He's very and talented, huh? Your brother. Yeah. 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 His brother actually created this logo for us, yep. which was really nice. So that's very special to Brandon. Um, and so he did that, but then Brandon created the shirt because he loves tie dye and rainbow type stuff. And yep. um, so he wanted to um, be able to, to have some of these to offer to his friends. And so um, at our events, the volunteers wear red shirts, and then we have these types of shirts for sale. Um, and then the money that we, we get from that goes back into our organization too. So we sell t-shirts and uh, water bottles and things like that at our events. And you're a nonprofit organization. Yes. So yep. people can make donations to the organization yes. if they'd like and stuff. Mm -hmm. You do have a fundraiser coming up. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes, we have a fundraiser coming up at Gabe's. Um, that's actually oh, in St. Paul. Yeah. yeah, on the corner of Energy Drive and Lexington. Um, so we have a fundraiser coming up there October 26th, and it will go from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we have some celebrities, local celebrities coming, and pro um, athletes coming there oh, um, to support names? us. Yeah. Well, we have Tommy Kramer is coming, and then we have the former Miss Minnesota. She will be there. Um, yeah. My husband, actually, um, Wardell Rankins, is um, just recently got his natural pro card in bodybuilding. So that's a very, I mean, we're very proud of that. So he's going to be there, too, nice. and along with um, some others, too. So we're going to be there, and what we really need is um, if people can come and support us, we would really appreciate that. And um, we're trying to get things to auction off at our event as well. We have a handful of things that we've gotten already, but if you know anybody has anything that they can offer to us to auction off, that would be great. Um, and then we'll have you know, a lot of fun things going on at our event too. So for information on donating auction items for the event that's on your website, why don't you tell us about the website? Then? Yep, the website is www.specialadventures.net. So anything that you would want to find out about Special Adventures is right there. You can donate there, um, get any information that you would like, and if anybody has any special needs adults in their family or friends and they would like to come to any of our events, they register right there on our website. Website. So, Brandon, you're going to be the disc jockey at the at the event then. They yes. Play music. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, he is. He really loves that, and we have a lot of really um, good supporters too mm -hmm. um, that have been supporting us like on a monthly basis and um, quarterly basis as well. Um, so, you some of the local businesses in Woodbury, such as Dorothy Ann's Bakery, um, Culver's, and um, that's just to name a few. Mm -hmm. um, so we've we've got a lot, gotten a lot of support, and yep. at our Halloween event, we're actually going to have um, White Castle. White Castle. Oh, really? Yep, White mm -hmm. Castle. They um, donated 500 hamburgers to us. 500? Oh, yes, wow. can you that believe that? Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty nice. I mean, everybody's been pretty generous, and we couldn't do it without the community and support of the community and local businesses. And all of our volunteers are strictly volunteers. None of us are paid, and it's just we do this, you know, because it's coming from our heart. We really want to see... Um, these people be able to get out and and connect with with others in a social setting and they're very appreciative and they have a, a lot of fun. Brandon, what do you say to these folks? A big thank you? If they were watching you right now, what would you tell them? Yeah. If they were watching you right now, what would you tell them? Would uh -huh. you say thank you? Thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for supporting us. Thank you um, for supporting us. Thank you. And Natalie, great. Um, glad that you could share this special adventures. I heard about it and I thought this is great to let everybody else know about it then too. So, And it was a pleasure to have you with us, Brandon, too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good luck with all your fundraising and all your events. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for having us on.
Finally, I'm proud to report that my work on Inside Healthcare for the past 14 years, along with my 25 plus years of broadcasting media in Minnesota, was just recognized by the National Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences and the Upper Midwest Emmy Chapter. I'm very humbled to receive this prestigious honor and we close out this program with a look back at some of my broadcasting work from the past four decades. Thank you everyone. See you next time on Inside Healthcare. We interrupt your regular programming to tell you of a plane crash in northeastern Minnesota. An ABC News crew and KSTP News team, including medical producer Jody Ritaka, were in the KSTP newsroom, working behind the scenes on this breaking news story. Senator Paul Wellstone had died in a plane crash. Twin Cities award-winning journalist Jody Ritaka has been at the front lines reporting and producing on major news stories of the day for the past 45 years. Jody was inside the KSTP control room on August 24, 1994, producing live coverage during a manhunt for a killer who shot and killed St. Paul police officers Ron Ryan and Tim Jones and his canine, Laser. At the University of Colorado in Boulder, she also wrote daily evening news copy, interning at KOA TV, now KCNC, and KMGH TV in Denver. Governor K. Orr is sounding like a candidate these days. Just five months into Jody's first job as a reporter, anchor, and producer at KNOP TV in North Platte, Nebraska, Jody was named acting news director, making her one of the first female TV news directors in the country. It was also at KNOP TV that Jody met the love of her life, Greg Carlini, her husband now of 35 years. As president of Nebraska AP Broadcasters, Jody worked with Nebraska's chief justices to open the Nebraska state courts to audio and video coverage. And for her coverage of the courts, she received the prestigious Law Day Award. Jody has worked in the Twin Cities media for more than 26 years, including 10 years at KSTP TV. Joining me now is Leanne Brown. In 2005, Jody produced health stories recorded at the St. Paul Farmers Market for Minnesota Ingredients, broadcasted on Sunday mornings on CARE 11. Jody also produced hundreds of health stories as senior public relations and media producer at Healthies for more than a decade. Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. And for the past 14 years, Jody has hosted and produced this award-winning Twin Cities cable TV show, Inside Healthcare on SCC TV. Congratulations to all our recipients and our nominees tonight. Jody has served on the Upper Midwest Emmy Chapter Board of Governors and Foundation since 2011, volunteered as an awards chair for two years, and now as board president and national trustee alternate. She has a passion for our next generation of broadcast professionals. I should know, she's not only my Aunt Jody, she inspired my career in TV news. It's an epidemic that people don't want to address. My Aunt Jody loves giving back to help make a difference and help save lives. She has helped raise more than a half million dollars for local nonprofits by volunteering and producing pro bono fundraising videos for organizations like the St. Paul Fire Foundation.